Hello and welcome to another episode of AI Ranch where we see how AI affects all sorts of industries, people, businesses around the world. And this is like a wild west of AI right now. And today I'm very happy to meet Agathe Ambulte, uh, my friend and advisor in uh, IT and especially on uh, generative AI nowadays. So uh, she is the uh, um, chief executive of the Smart Digital Solutions uh, Innovation Park, right? Eight years of experience in actual programming, software development. That's something rare in, for these advisory roles, actually, nowadays. Advisor uh, for the uh, IT, different departments in different cities, larger companies, um, consultant of uh, many uh, businesses around Baltics. Uh, also, the creator and host of IT Waffle Meetup, um, the podcast, uh, Liepaja Tesh Girls, and the new program, AI Kick, right? Um, so, I am really happy to meet you here and discuss these topics, uh, and welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I love your podcast. This is exactly what we need at this moment. Yeah, could you please tell about uh, your story? Like, uh, especially, this is really interesting that you, you're saying that you have this programming experience and now you are kind of the thought leader and advisor. Uh, and uh, how did you make this transition? What were the checkpoints in your story? Well, <laughs> I was the girl who didn't understand IT at all. Mm. And then came the important decision in my life to choose where I want to study for university. And I chose computer science. It was a uh, fortunate decision, best decision I made ever mm. <laughs> to study computer science. And uh, I was scared, I was uh, insecure about my knowledge, but uh, as I went and after the second course, I already got my first programming job. Mm -hmm. It was for a, one of the largest companies in Latvia to re-engineer their inner systems. And I was very excited and in disbelief that I actually can program and that uh, I can create a real change. And, and yeah, then, uh, then I uh, participated in a startup where I switched to front-end programming from full-stack programming. And after that, I went and uh, had a great experience in Belarus, as, as uh, strange as it sounds. <laughs> it's so strange, <laughs> uh, like especially at this climate, right? Uh, great experience in Belarus, but I, I believe you, I, you know, uh, there are some things that are different here, right? Yeah, but you know what? It was back then, it was before the unrest that mm -hmm. happened uh, recently, but the climate there was uh, sketchy uh, even when <laughs> I uh, went there. It was a couple of years ago, uh, a lot of years ago, actually. And even then, uh, Belarus in IT was 10 years ahead of Latvia, it hmm. seemed. The, there was a great community there. Everything was vibrant. The hmm. main top companies were there of the world. And we actually worked more with Europe and mm -hmm. America than with the uh, other countries. So I went there to work again for Europe. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it was a great experience. And that led me uh, to, uh, well, I needed to finish my master's mm -hmm. degree. And uh, for that, I came back to Liepāja, to Latvia. And I understood that, hey, I have nobody to, to talk to. Where's my community? Mm -hmm. Because in Belarus, each day there was a workshop, everything programming, uh, a lot of IT events, tech communities, this and that, and very diverse. And I came back uh, to, to, to nothing mm -hmm. in, in Liepāja. And I decided, no, we cannot continue like this. I need my community. Mm -hmm. So I built it. And that's where my IT event and community activity began. I created IT Waffle Meetup, mm -hmm. which was the first step to create a community in Liepāja. And from that community came mm -hmm. a lot of great things. I started to work as an advisor in the municipality, Liepāja City. And uh, then we founded Liepāja Tech Girls, which was mm -hmm. great. Why, why not? Sure. Because Riga Tech Girls were, were already going strong, but there was not uh, uh, but, a but lot of regional way, coverage. Just, just for the viewers to understand, like uh, I've been talking in Baltics and different conferences. There are large business conferences like Riga Com, right? There is thousands of people coming and... The, these junior achievement Latvia, tens of thousands of youth coming, but then 
uh, this, what is this called, like IT day in Liepāja. Yes. You, were, you managed to get like, a little, like <laughs> 2,000 or 1,000 at least uh, these these uh, youngsters there. And this is not like a capital of, of, of any kind of city. So that was like uh, really surprising. Um, how did you manage to do that? <laughs> that was the first thing that I did when I started to work in Liepāja municipality as an advisor on IT and smart digital solutions. And I said, hey, if we want to create IT education to, to, to keep up the, the pace, we need to inspire the young people. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I said, okay, if we don't have it, let's just do it. And now IT Day in Liepāja is the largest IT inspirational conference for young people in Latvia. And I was yeah. glad that you were one of the speakers. You saw yeah. it firsthand. So, yeah, I was yeah. totally not expecting uh, and like not, not the capital city seeing like literally thousands of of young, uh, you know, teenagers uh, having the like, like listening the AI topic. So that was yeah. that was really uh, something that you did there. And then uh, okay, these are the community building um, that you uh, like uh, unexpectedly bring from Belarus to Latvia, <laughs> which is like the very strange path, I think. But but great. Uh, and then uh, then. Um, uh, how did you get into the advisory and uh, consultation business? And um, was, is there did did it was enough with with the knowledge that you already had, or you had to learn something more on top of what you had, right? Oh, definitely, yeah. It was a challenging path because I had to switch from programmer to CEO. And right now, I manage two organizations, and I have been doing this for almost six years. And boy, do we had our ch challenges. Oh, wow. And uh, to create all these events, to create uh, study programs, to create uh, webinars, master classes, and everything regarding IT, we had to overcome different challenges. And it was a big learning curve for me as a, uh, as a programmer and as a CEO. So there were a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. And uh, combined with the complexities of IT, since we had to teach IT, because, okay, first step is inspire. That's why the IT day in Leopaya. But then they were inspired. Okay, so what can I do now? Yes. Where should I go? What should I do? And we needed to create the inspiration and the opportunities. Okay, so this is the next step. And then you can go study. Then you can go to work. And we wanted to combine all these opportunities in mm -hmm. one place. So that's the digital innovation park, which combines, it's a, it's a community center mm -hmm. where you can simply call and say, hey, I'm relocating from Riga to Liepaja, which is mm -hmm. a tendency right now. And uh, I want to practice summer practice and you can mm -hmm. simply call us and we'll find the, the right opportunities and we'll create them. So that's why the conferences, the webinars, the studies, everything we, mm -hmm. we created ourselves. And that created the beautiful things like, for example, one more project that we are cooperating in, the Artificial Intelligence Talent Program. That mm -hmm. was one of the uh, first in-depth programs, mm -hmm. which creates an actual change. Mm -hmm. It creates AI specialists in mm -hmm. Latvia. And uh, from I that, would say it's, uh, it's uh, the, the specialists that we create... Uh, uh, I, I would challenge are are at the same par or better than the masters in, in uh, artificial intelligence that that comes from the large universities. But we do this much faster, right? Yeah, universities are an important uh, yeah. part of it. But this is the fastest way that you can become an AI developer in Latvia. Mm -hmm. And I really loved your take on that when you told me that, you know what? If we would give the right math. Uh, during high school, these young people could surpass mm -hmm. masters. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, I've had this experience for many years myself. Also, maybe you don't know or somebody else don't know. I, I started um, doing the programming and computer uh, things in high school commercially in large companies, actually. <clears throat> so I, I was I was lucky to having the the project manager in this one of the, these large companies to see potential in me and give the the same t uh, test tasks as they give to, for the students managed to do them very well and then afterwards like uh, I would. I didn't really care much about school. I just wanted to get uh, to do work and uh, earn money. So that that was that was my story. But you mentioned that you also have this uh, ma master's degree, right? Uh, or master's studies? Did you finish it? Yeah, yeah. I have uh, a master's in IT. Right. Okay. With cool. a qualification in project management as well. So, and this is a good point. The uh, 
And so nowadays, you know, we're talking about this program that, that we are running together, and uh, there's a lot of other education opportunities. Uh, how important do you see this um, academic path versus can you just learn everything online? Uh, can you just configure your uh, GPT to teach you things? And what, what, do we need uh, this formal education nowadays? I'm pro mm -hmm. academic uh, education. Yeah. I think that it's one of the best filters for for knowledge initially. Mm -hmm. You get the right people around you. Mm -hmm. You get the right uh, mindset that you need to do things. You need to study continuously. Of course, this can be done also on your own, but it's very important to have these mentors around you, to have ambitious and, and cool, like-minded people around it. And that's why I think as a community part, universities are irreplaceable because they give the right start the right kickoff but i'm all uh, for the education because uh, all for um, practical knowledge because i myself i'm a lifelong learner i learn mm -hmm. every day mm -hmm. i have scheduled sure. time for learning so i know i have my master's degree and i love it i, mm -hmm. I enjoyed the studies i enjoyed the people around me but right now i'm continuing it and it combines perfectly when mm -hmm. i have the education and i can simultaneously curve out different paths for me which are interesting to me no, I, believe yeah. I agree that the filtering part for any kind of uh, educational programs it's like filter on top of filter on top of filter and then you see who survives through all of this uh, <laughs> yeah. at, the, at, the, at the end um, the, even though a lot of people advocate for not having at all formal education nowadays many of those who who uh, who actually advocate and who are uh, in a good position do have formal education if, even though they don't use it in the way it was intended right uh, but um but yeah, I, I, you know, I'm also an associate professor, so I, I'm not that far off of the formal education as well. Uh, but then um, if we continue the uh, towards the actual pain points and problems, one is the education part, and it seems that that's something you're interested in. And uh, the other part is actual business cases. So <clears throat> what kind of like common things you see when you talk with companies around Baltics uh, and their um, willingness to adopt AI technologies in their processes. Do you see something common with, with all of them or every case is totally different? Every case is a bit similar mm -hmm. and completely different at the same time. And maybe here I can start on the advisory part also mm -hmm. from the previous question. Uh, the, sure. the, the, that could be a good intro why I actually do the things that I do. Because now I advise businesses on how to implement generative AI solutions for them to make the processes more effective, to work faster, more efficient, and be more happier with the results. And uh, when... Gen AI became popular when it became available. I said to my team, this is it. We are doing it that way now. Mm -hmm. Generative AI, AI first, everything. Mm -hmm. That's how we are going to roll. And the team said, yes, mm -hmm. let's do it. And after a week, I said, well, team, what are your prompts? What have we digitalized this week? Ah, oh, yeah, uh, well, you know, I, I had a lot of work this huh. week, so I didn't get to it. And then, oh, cool, yeah, yeah, work, work, good, <laughs> good, good to work, <laughs> work hard. Next week, okay, team, what we have? And uh, uh, the, uh, like, it was faster to me for me to do it the old way, you know, mm -hmm. and the prompts were, uh, and then I understood, hey, guys, we're all IT masters, we're all IT bachelors, mm -hmm. we have this, we, there is no uh, brain barrier here we we know how mm -hmm. to do these things. There's no why why are we not using this cool technology? And they said, well, yeah. And then I understood that there is a big barrier mm -hmm. in the mindset, and we overcame it. And now I see how companies can overcome it also as well. And that's what my main thing that mm -hmm. I try to initially do with them: teach them, inspire mm -hmm. them, uh, same as in in, in sure, the cities. Similar, yeah and give them a kickoff base from where to start implementing Gen AI. And when you go through all these barriers, it becomes simple. Oh yeah, yeah, why did we do, why did we uh, do it didn't do way. it earlier mm -hmm. already? Mm -hmm. So the, yeah, that's the biggest issue for them all. That's why I said that there are some mm -hmm. similarities. And they have this barrier, even smart people, mm -hmm. people who already know the technologies, 
even mm-hmm. them they have barriers and then the second thing is that what i see is similar that there are some inner innovators mm-hmm. maybe who don't sure. have the flag they are innovating for themselves mm-hmm. oh, this is the cool technology we could do this and we can do this mm-hmm. and maybe the management still ah slower slower mm-hmm. this is uh, touchy touchy we don't mm-hmm. want to speed up everything and they're ready to build but they don't have the the yes mm-hmm. to build and then there are the inner uh, then there are the inner skeptics mm-hmm. this is not where we want to go this will uh, change everything wait a minute mm-hmm. what about privacy what about everything no 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 <laughs> <laughs> and this these are the similar things and we have to work with these people to understand when to use it and mm-hmm. when not to use it mm-hmm. and uh, sometimes management uh, still doesn't have the understanding mm-hmm. what is the gen- uh, generative ai because it's not the a solver of all problems mm-hmm. it's a niche problem thing mm-hmm. that they can solve but well, these these companies um... Okay, for one thing is just to make a seminar uh, like, like that. That's not a huge commitment, but they, they have. Do you, do you see that Baltics are ready for this? Do you see that in Baltics uh, companies do have AI budget? Like they are willing to put, like average size company willing to put twenty, fifty thousand euros, like in the minimum, just just to start start using AI in their processes, and then potentially in a few years getting return on the investment in multiples. Uh, Do you see something like that or or is it far away in the future? I don't know about the amount of budget Mm -hmm. and uh, I uh, encourage them to do it. But the thing which is similar to almost all companies where I go into and give these uh, seminars or strategic sessions, after that they say, okay, yep, this was the thing. We needed this and now we're buying the licenses, we're we're doing this. Mm And then the the work uh, the employees see that okay we have access mm-hmm. to the platform so baby steps but mm-hmm. those are the right steps and the right at, at least mm-hmm. I see that the initial funding and green sign mm-hmm. is given through licenses and through a yes mm-hmm. let's do this. But again, okay, the one thing is just to educate people how to use calculator, right? Judge GPT. But but then uh, the other thing is um, to fully automate processes to to make uh, agentic flows, right? So that there uh, some job that was able uh, that was always done by by some person dealing with documents, right? One document, second document, copying things from other to other. That's everything of that. Uh, even though the documents change, can be fully automated nowadays. So, um, do you see that that the companies are ready to start replacing human workers with with these ag- agents, uh, or or is is it uh, the market is is still very very uh, early? I would say it's really early for that. Mm-hmm. I would say that the technology is also in its uh, infancy, let's say, and it has a lot of uh, ways where to develop still. And from what I see, we cannot replace a person right now. Well, we can probably, but mm-hmm. the 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 how it's going for where I visit the companies and in also in my experience mm-hmm. in our organizations, uh, it's you can replace the function, mm-hmm. but the person stays, and the role of the person changes. For example, mm-hmm. we don't, we in my organizations, I'm afraid to say never, but mm-hmm. it seems now that we will never need a graphic designer mm-hmm. because we have uh, created our prompts, our systems, uh, full processes on how we create visuals and how we launch our events mm-hmm. from text to images to, to everything. You don't need graphic designer for your events specifically, probably when you would like to launch some, a lot, some product or something it depends on every level on which you need uh, some kind of quality, right? Yeah, yeah. that's mm-hmm. the thing. We don't need the graphical designer, but we still need a person who understands design, mm-hmm. who has, uh, like I say, two right eyes, who can see the math beneath mm-hmm. it, who can communicate. Okay, so we need a, a uh, object here mm-hmm. and there who understands the psychology uh, of of colors mm-hmm. so the person stays the mm-hmm. skill set changes mm-hmm. now he is the graphical engineer gen okay. ai engineer so the person stays the the, the technology is uh, cool um, probably it will mm-hmm. create some some replaced 
functions, mm -hmm. but right now they, they, it, they, it doesn't replace. Uh, well, I, I see, I see the ways how this works. We have some experience with building agents, where, for example, previously you had uh, real estate agents who are preparing um, uh, photos, advertisements, uh, following up on leads, and then you can like do this fully automated. You build the, uh, you put in the. Uh, photos from the, the real estate, right? Uh, some uh, basic facts about location, uh, potential price, whatever. It, it looks for other different, similar, uh, well-performing advertisements, puts it all together, handles the incoming SMSs, handles incoming emails, uh, qualifies if that's a valid lead and then puts your calendar event you need to sh come and show actual person so uh, except this physical aspect where you go and uh, show the property everything else is fully automated nobody is sitting and uh, typing things or negotiating the prices you know price negotiation totally automatable so all of these things uh, so it's kind of do you see also the opportunities like these in, in the companies where you talk to that, uh, that they don't realize how much they can automate actually? Oh, definitely, definitely. And I think that's the way to go. And that's why I give these strategic sessions where the company management comes together and thinks of the processes because we mm -hmm. don't want to digitalize because of digitalization. Mm -hmm. We want to create smart, smarter, more efficient processes. And then they sit in, in groups and they work together on the processes. And I think that's the, that's the only way to go. Do they understand the full potential right now? I think mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the message that uh, we both are bringing to the, the companies. The, the one thing which uh, I, I guess i a little bit disagreeing is that the, that the uh, that the technology is is very early. It seems like in the big the time of scale. If you look back ten years, it will be very early. But uh, but the growth, uh, exponential gr uh, growth of of uh, of knowledge and and the uh, capabilities is something that humans is very hard to understand. So that they are used to having. Windows XP, Windows 10, Windows 11, Windows 12, it's, it's they are not used to having like every six months a uh, completely new operating system. And, uh, and this is what's happening with AI. It's basically the, the thing what you could do uh, with generative AI last year, it is like 10 times better this year. So I uh, agree. Yeah. I completely agree. And the, the jump will, we are uh, used to linear growth yeah. uh, slowly we are yeah. uh, new updates and everything yeah. but now it's going to be like uh, yeah. geometric growth it's, it's going to be super fast yeah so we, companies we are, are not quite ready for that at this point definitely especially as you start uh, like you probably consult as, as you go with la larger and larger companies that they are slower and slower and uh, the home, like in your estimate, what do you think? How many years it will take for mid-sized, large-sized companies like, let's say, in um, construction business, in some IT systems, in uh, telecoms, so, mm, to to start using these technologies in their daily uh, business? Ooh, <laughs> that's a tough question. But what I'm working on when when I enter companies. When I give them this, uh, these uh, educational sessions, these, uh, these lectures, I focus on personal efficiency because there's this, this barrier is on a human level. Mm -hmm. And if the human doesn't see the benefit of that, if the employee doesn't understand how to use it, when to use it, and can't build processes, because the people who can create the best flows, like you said, fully automated are still the professionals who know what to actually do in those processes. So I put right now an emphasis on the person. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's why it's... It's still it's, about uh, like uh, very similar to educating you, basically. Yeah, <laughs> it's, exactly. It's, it's not... not the, but then again, that's a good point. So let's let's go there. So the the uh, how what is the experience of of company working with you together with this consultancy? Like what is the process step by step? Uh, like uh, and how it's different just from you know somebody coming to this this uh, digital innovation center and uh, le learning their things. Okay, so we begin with assessment. Where <laughs> are we right now? Usually the skills uh, the the skills are low. Low mm -hmm. to, to, to moderate. Somebody has used the technology but doesn't know the engineering mm -hmm. part of it and everything. So assessment. Mm -hmm. What have you done with this technology? What mm -hmm. do you know about it? And 
do you already see where you can use it? From that, I understand mm -hmm. the, the, where are we right now. Then we create, uh, uh, then the next part is the lecture. So we need to be all, we need to understand all mm -hmm. what is the technology capable of. So for three hours, mm -hmm. uh, it's a long, uh, long process, sure. but it's fun. And for three hours, we go from zero to 100 in AI. Uh, from basics, this is the button, this is where this is located, to mm -hmm. prompt engineering, mm -hmm. since it's very important to understand to write the prompt. Mm -hmm. And in depth with everything. Then they have their materials, because the, this technology is so new that uh, people have a uh, uh, hard time to grasp everything. So I leave them with materials that they have a one mm -hmm. month period to go through. And to and uh, after that, of course, they can return to it every day. But one month or a few weeks, or uh, mm -hmm. at least one week to go through the materials and try everything for themselves. Then comes the strategic session. Then the management, the higher management, uh, board members, uh, leaders of, of, uh, of uh, departments, they come together, they split into groups, and they work on actual processes mm -hmm. in their own organization and come up with the best places, which are dependent. Do we have data there, actually, mm -hmm. that we can use visual data or mm -hmm. uh, text data that we can use in these processes? Then we uh, look at the value or, or the uh, readiness of the data. Is it uh, everywhere in each person's mm -hmm. Excel spreadsheet or is it in a database or what, what's the quality of the data there? Mm -hmm. And then we go and look at what is the impact of this, uh, this process if we switch it mm -hmm. to Gen AI or some uh, auto mm -hmm. GPTs. And, uh, and after that, we, we simply look at the process and we define where can we start. And what, what's best about this is that they are left with a game plan. So mm -hmm. we can start here and we can get to there and they change the mindset. They know how to approach the next process and the next process and the next because they have the, the mm -hmm. roadmap. Okay. Um, so, but, but still, you, you mentioned previously that's uh, on the personal level. So how, how you can develop strategy for the company in, in uh, let's say, few years or just one year, but uh, for Gen AI uh, usage, uh, if it's uh, mainly focused on personal knowledge, not automating their processes. It begins with the personal thing. Mm -hmm. We cannot do anything if we don't have the personal mm -hmm. part. <laughs> and then uh, that that's the thing. What I focus on is the actual processes, the strategy for the process automation. Mm -hmm. And then the company, they, they have to decide or how do they want to approach it. Is it AI first, all in, everything? Some companies take it slow. I mm -hmm. respect that also. It's, uh, it's Sometimes it just depends on the industry mm -hmm. and, and other as aspects, why they choose that approach. And uh, so, yeah, we look at the strategy of processes. I say uh, vividly no one sur survey uh, that was... <clears throat> before uh, ChatGPT, Gen AI, and after, where they said, well, you know, uh, AI will more least likely never replace like copywriters, lawyers, uh, the the artists, the designers, and then a year later, the uh, AI will definitely replace copywriters, designers. Uh, so basically. Whatever you tend to think, uh, my industry is safe. AI will never uh, replace me. Uh, that's most likely a very huge mistake. <laughs> well, the assumption was a mistake. Yeah. But I really loved one of your previous podcasts with Mitilis Bashtiks from mm -hmm. Asketic, where he's also a re representative of the creative industries. Mm -hmm. And he's one of the first ones to sure. get the hit. But he works together with AI. Yes. He understood that he, whoa, we yes. can 10x or yes. 100x our processes. Sure. And I love the approach and I love it so much. And that's, that's what I want to, uh, to bring maybe to mm -hmm. AI will replace us. Before that, they mm -hmm. said computers will replace people. Mm -hmm. Well, no, but, uh, but in some cases, yes, but it will free up time for us. It will free us up for strategic things, for enjoying our mm -hmm. families, our free time, our, our other purposes in life. I think uh, like usually what happens is that uh, like if you look historically is that the technology um, basically replaces lots of things, uh, uh, but at the same time gives us, uh, it, so it's not like 
uh, you have a lot of free time. You you have a lot more work, but uh, you you're also like 10x more per, per productive. Yeah. Like at the same time, it it also brings up the uh, living standards. Like if you think about it, like the um, let's say hundred years ago. Only the royalties had uh, the opportunity to not not wash their own dishes, right, at the whole house or or clothes, right. Now now we all live like royalties, basically. So and nowadays, we, what we could look is what the rich, super rich uh, royalties now nowadays enjoy, and this is what the average society might enjoy very soon when the AI um, explodes the the productivity at the same time. At that moment, there will be a new level of royalty. Maybe they will fly to Mars every day or something like that. So it's 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 uh, this this whole process is um, it is not not uh, actually. You can look at it very optimistically, right? Well, I am looking. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm embracing technology. I understand that there are some risks. I understand that uh, we need to manage, we need to regulate, but not in a like suffocating way. There are some risks, of course, as with all technologies, but I'm very optimistic and sure. uh, I really love these new opportunities. I love that people are empowered. And that's what I, I'm excited to live in this time because when I started to study in the university, I was afraid for my future. I didn't know, am I smart enough? Can I work in IT? How is it going to be? And it's so rare in human history when all of humanity is on one starting line that we have this new, brand mm -hmm. new technology and who uses it the best can create a leap of uh, of uh, of all the all the good things and it's right like, now is the moment yeah it's like exactly you mentioned Mikael was uh, from the uh, he's one of the leaders, leading Baltics uh, graphics designers. Uh, so we had uh, this talk and he mentioned that he remembers time. Uh, and this is uh, kind of strange maybe for uh, Western listeners is that uh, in Eastern Europe, uh, computers arrived later, right? And when the first computers arrived, uh, it was like the same what you're saying. Everybody was tinkering around what you can do with this device. And uh, like, it's super exciting. And now it's kind of like the same feeling for him. He remembers that uh, it was early 90s it, it felt like that and now it felt, feels again like that yeah mm. it's exciting it's wild west yeah uh, it is uh, <laughs> it, it only uh, yeah it's uh, yeah well, only the, 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 there, there is this uh, over regulation uh, kind of looming ahead but uh, uh, I'll, by the way if you look at the the kind of research what they are showing the impact of AI technologies depending on markets it's it's exploding in America, in in Asia, in Africa. Europe is very modest uh, because the because Europe is is shooting uh, shooting itself in foot basically by by trying to over regulate everything before even it lifts up. Right? Uh, do you feel also something like that already? It needs to be regulated, but uh, I'm hopeful. I'm voting each time when I have the choice for our uh, for our future in uh, in in everything. I hope that they understand that we need to go forward, but in a regulated way. Of course, we need some transparency and some things, but uh, but we cannot stop, I think at this point. Okay, uh, then uh... Please give some kind of uh, rough, uh, you know, estimates. Like if you start with company, let's say uh, 50 people, 100 people, there is some similarities with processes with that size. Like what what is the kind of cost that they, they should be aware of when they start this kind of uh, consultancy process to introducing AI? Just just some rough numbers, maybe. Well, yeah, it's uh, it's in the thousands, mm -hmm. and the, the the minimum is probably around two thousand. Mm -hmm. That we can that, that that's it's uh, for enough people for in, in enough time, so that they get the right materials, and so that the program is tailored. Mm -hmm. So that that's the initial, and then it it goes up. So, mm -hmm. uh, it goes up depending on the ambitions mm -hmm. of the company, of how much do they want to initially mm -hmm. innovate, mm -hmm. and how much do they want to practically do in this time. So it depends. And then uh, regarding these, you mentioned the financial institutions, which are not the large banks, but the the, the aspiring institutions. So they are uh, fast moving now. So if any uh, credit 
uh, companies, financial fintechs listen, right? That they, they should move, start moving now because other competitors are already moving, right? Oh, definitely. <laughs> Everyone is moving. Yeah. And from what I've seen, public sector is actually very active. Oh. I'm pleasantly surprised and I'm all for it. And I'm there to support mm. them. Ministries, municipalities, uh, public sector, different players. And uh, also smaller companies are really into that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, large companies as well. They are exploring mm -hmm. and uh, manufacturing, from what I see, recently has picked up the pace. Okay, so we are doing this thing or we are building this thing, but we have a lot of processes inside. How can we manage those? And then, yeah, so everyone is waking up and my schedule is filling up rapidly. So from what I see, Latvia so is... How long uh, it needs to wait, wait, wait for, <laughs> for your consultancy? Like if somebody uh, calls you today, like... Well, I leave uh, some uh, uh, extra, extra, extra favorite client time, but usually it's uh, from three weeks to a to, to couple of months. Yeah. Yeah, well, so uh, the... If somebody wants to do this, then they should start doing it now. Otherwise, there will be a long queue. But then the uh, there's one one I think there's misconception. There is this 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 one thing that um, uh, typical uh, curve of uh, technology introduction into businesses. It goes like uh, like the, there is this uh, exponential hype, right? And then it falls back, and then there is the plateau of uh, productivity. But uh, I think the um, from my observation. Uh, and I actually work with also a couple of large companies in the Baltics. And what I see is that um, people think that we are in the hype, but uh, in the peak of the hype and soon there will be this this drop, right? But but what I see, and I, I want to see your, listen your take on this, is that actually we are far, far away from the peak because right now my argument is this like i think we are in the very base of, of of the ai peak even though people think that this is crazy that's happening but it's 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 there will be much more crazy so it's because the large corporations um so relatively large corporations for the baltics just uh, this year start to make any kind of ai strategies any kind of de ai departments any kind of budget for ai like very small AI budget, like any, and there is no no hype there. There is just the very beginning. What do you think? I think that we are in a hype uh, situation for curiosity mm -hmm. around AI. So management is, which the data also shows that management is uh, very interested in the technology. Mm -hmm. The hype is big there. They want to understand. They want to, 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 to look. Employees, not so much. The hype is less, but the hype is huge. But the knowledge and as you said, the strategies, they fall behind at uh, I, rare, rare companies in Latvia have this, yes, all AI. AI first approach, not many, and uh, not but at all budget. Like I mean, <laughs> to, to, have, to have the hype, to have the crash right afterwards that you invest a lot of money into AI and uh, then it doesn't deliver, and then you find what works. Right, you need to start investing lots of money. But right now, at least in Eastern Europe, there there is almost no serious investment in automating processes in AI in many companies. That's what I see. What do you see different or the same? Well, yeah, we we are like like I said, we we are rare occasion mm -hmm. in our human history where we are on one baseline. Mm -hmm. The big companies kind of are mm -hmm. in the on the same starting position as smaller companies mm -hmm. because everyone needs to implement these new processes automate everything mm -hmm. and whoever falls behind this is a time of uh, of deletion mm -hmm. <laughs> of, of there's opportunity for, yes. for new new players to to come in the market because old ones are way too slow so that that's that, that's that's an interesting yeah this is opportunity part. to succeed and to go past others and mm -hmm. this is an opportunity to fail epically mm -hmm. Yeah, that's also true. So, and then in uh, one of your articles, you mentioned that entrepreneurs uh, need to become engineers in response to the demand of AI. That was something that I was um, I was wondering about because, uh, from what I see, is I think that now computers, uh, because of the large language models and the like, uh, can uh, now talk in a human language, and we don't actually need to program 
many things in a programming language. So why why you why why is that your take and maybe you changed that already? <laughs> this this was I think this is from maybe one interview where I said that municipalities uh, should have engineers in their team, like programming mm -hmm. engineers, IT personnel mm -hmm. who understands and can program solutions. That that was my hot take, and I'm completely 100% uh, convinced that it's still the case. But what maybe I wanted to communicate through that is that you need people who are deep into tech, who understand mm -hmm. what opportunities do we have, what how can we approach those opportunities, and approach them in a, uh, let's say, scientific way or in an engineering way where we can actually sit down and talk about the solutions. Because very often there's a, this uh, gap. Divide, yeah? yeah, gap. So you mean it's not really about uh, the computer programming, it's just the ability to think like an engineer, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. more people around who can understand technology and work with it and create not only mm -hmm. use solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and uh, maybe you can share some some tools already that that is in your tool set. You mentioned you automated the graphical design. Many listeners probably don't know lots of tools. You know them. Maybe you can share some experience. Yeah. So for our organization uh, organization management system, we use Notion, mm -hmm. and we build all the solutions ourselves for all the processes. That's why maybe we are skilled in looking at the processes, mm -hmm. and and Notion AI has already an AI integration, so that's really cool. So this tool allows us uh, mm -hmm. to have AI help instantly anywhere in our whole database mm -hmm. of everything, and. Uh, from there, that's our, that's our central point. When we create images, we have created our prompt uh, database, mm -hmm. which we use when we want to create something. We go for ChatGPT, which uses DALI when we need mm -hmm. uh, like a magical or fantasy or, or some uh, uh, cool uh, mm -hmm. design for images. If we need hyper-realistic, we go to Midjourney, which is uh, like in a Discord server. And uh, then we use also for precision, we tend to use Photoshop's, this, uh, this uh, AI integration, which mm -hmm. helps us tweak uh, the image a bit. Mm -hmm. But after that, we take the, the images to Canva or, or some other place where we add our branding, like the logo, some uh, texts and, and, and stuff like that. So we don't use Gen AI for precision. We use it only for generation mm -hmm. purposes, and then we bring it to other programs. And what we love about these platforms where we bring it, like Canva, Notion, uh, Photoshop, they are all AI integrated. Mm -hmm. uh, AI is available already inside. It's built in. Mm -hmm. And for texts, we are a fan of uh, ChatGPT. We use it for, for everything. Of course, other uh, models mm -hmm. are or other platforms are also good for mm -hmm. different purposes. Uh, for translation, we use DeepL translation uh, platform it's also ai powered by ai and uh, what else what else what hot tools can i give you some we also look at different use cases when we need something specific we use platforms like um, what was it called where you have a set of different ai tools and uh, for maybe if we need to work with sound we pick for sound and, there, there, uh, there is one platform which we are we are publishing our stuff it's called there's an ai for that yes it's a, if any, uh, building the tools, so they, they take, I think, 500 euros so that you can post your tool there, but they have like 6,000 tools. People are looking there, the tools, and then you can use them. Yeah, it's a great database for different mm -hmm. tools. So when we stumble upon something that we cannot solve with our uh, default stack of AI tools, then we go to there and find some other solutions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, do, do you see also the situation that... Um, people give up on some of these tools because they are, first of all, not understanding how to use them, and secondly, not willing to pay for them? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was me initially. And when my first experience with ChatGPT was also, I opened it, oh, so it's a bad Google or something <laughs> like what's 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 the, what's the all the hype about <laughs> worst ways of using uh, chat gpt free version as a google that, that is the worst way how to exactly <laughs> and that's why i think a lot of employees also have this barrier because okay i tried it it sucks yeah. <laughs> well yeah and usually the the problem is in the prompts because the prompts 
suck. But also, <laughs> the, 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 the you show for sure now by 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 now this that. Uh, language models and this this is super great technology right but uh, it's it uh, it would be similar like you say generating these image tasks that, that you try to do something uh, with dolly that you know mid journey does better or, or other ways so it's it's like uh, hitting screw with uh, with a hammer right uh, it's uh, you hit nails with a hammer not screw right but uh, so it's it's definitely not uh, supposed to work like a search engine there are way better tools that also use AI as for search engine, but it's but search engines cannot do uh, what ChatGPT can do, right? Yeah. Mm, so it depends on what you know about them, how to use them, and also willing to pay for them, right? Do you yeah. see, see that, uh, see some difference uh, when you talk with people? Are they more open to understanding that, that these tools cost money now nowadays? Well, yeah, this is also a good barrier and uh, like a <laughs> bad barrier probably. But in one, this strategic session, we were thinking, the management said, okay, so Agate, thank you. <laughs> we are quite sure that we will implement this. And the other says, oh, but wait, the costs, what are the costs? <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm glad you asked. It's 20 euros for a mm -hmm. person or in a Teams version, $25 mm -hmm. uh, dollars, uh, per month. Uh, if you take it for a year and uh, well we don't know that this means yeah so we start with 600 dollars of investment we will and then the board member said wait a minute it's one hour of work <laughs> mm -hmm. that pays for the whole month of the mm -hmm. person who uses it it buys off instantly in one hour. And what we previously did for eight hours with this text, for this platform, that platform, blog posts, Facebook mm -hmm. posts, everything. Now we do it in one hour. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's a no brainer for me. And you mentioned tools and that they cost. We are like in a candy shop right now. Mm -hmm. We are still in the candy shop phase. We are willing to invest at least for a month. Let's try it out. Let's try this mid journey. Think of a jig. What, what is it? What does it do? How to work with it? Because we are curious simply how the technology works. Because mm -hmm. it's right now, it's like um, it doesn't have the um, full potential of functionality that it could have. And it mm -hmm. will develop, and we don't want to fall off. So mm -hmm. I would encourage to invest, yeah, a couple of thousands mm -hmm. for, for education. And for the first tool set, mm -hmm. simply to identify the inner innovators who join mm -hmm. the platform, who start to use it. That's so valuable for future mm -hmm. development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, I, I definitely know people don't realize uh, the, already what you can do with this, but but you can help on others. So then, um, okay, we, we touched in our conversation regarding the education, the business consultancy, and uh, then um, if we to, towards the end, if you look towards the future, uh, so what do you think? What skill sets actually are needed for the youth in the future? So I, I, I had uh, situations when people call me and says say that, uh, you know, like you're a professor, uh, would you recommend my son to, to learn uh, computer programming nowadays? Uh, tomorrow we do not need any more computer programmers. So what do you think? <laughs> well, yeah, I'm a, by education, I'm a programmer as well. I uh, look at the, the things. What I think the one of the most important skills is communication right now. It was important mm -hmm. previously, but right now through prompts and through this new way that we can communicate with technologies, it's even more important. And like I said, we don't need graphical designers anymore, but we need people who can communicate graphical design with the computer. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, so communication is uh, up there. It was up there previously, but now it's sky high. And uh, technical skills and what I mentioned about engineers, I think it's just healthy curiosity to spend time how it works, the tinkering part. What uh, you and Mitchell mm -hmm. is also previously in a, the other podcast mentioned, the tinkering part. I think those are two mm -hmm. ultra valuable skills that were valuable before. Well, the, the, the programming languages is the one tool of engineering. There's... Actually, yes. the, the whole uh, mindset, uh, whole ability to use uh, not only computer programming, but everything else that you can, from physics, uh, from mathematics, from fields, that's uh, something that will not go away, even though you can ask 
advice to these AI systems for any of that. But um, at the end of the day, like um, you need to be different than your friend right next to you who is who is not educated and just use uh, the tool. So you need to be better, right? Yeah, definitely. And I think programming. So what that we can communicate what website I want? The skill itself is mm -hmm. really cool to have, to, mm -hmm. to communicate with the computer through programming code, at least one programming language. I think it's a, it's a must in our days to understand mm -hmm. how it works and what is the, what's going on inside when ChatGPT or something else generates the, the mm -hmm. code. The understanding of it is very important. The same with math. Not doing math for math's sake, mm -hmm. because math develops logical thinking. Mm -hmm. It develops uh, our, mm -hmm. our, our how we view different problems. It's problem solving in essence. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, so the, the the fundamental skills are not going away. That they, they're very important. Uh, so yeah, and then um, uh, at the end, like uh, where can listeners and your potential fi partners find you? Uh, what are the, some sources, resources that you could recommend? You can definitely join me and uh, let's be friends on LinkedIn mm -hmm. and on Facebook, on Instagram, of course. But uh, my main uh, platform is LinkedIn. Also, you can find different courses if you're interested in uh, studying more about uh, a generative AI, first steps in generative AI. Definitely visit Digital Innovation Park, Digip LV, where you can find some study courses and uh, get going with these new skills that we so desperately need the whole mm -hmm. society. Okay, great talking to you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for having. I enjoyed the conversation. Let's do it. Let's yes, uh, yes, bring yes. AI. <laughs> yes, so let's ed educate everyone of this <laughs> huge potential. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so thank you for joining this episode. As a gratitude for our work, what we do here, please spread the word, share this uh, with your friends, colleagues, and see you in the next episode.